their date is a success, but when Joe tells Dee Dee that he is dying, she tells him she cannot deal with the revelation and leaves. He should have had waited until after they banged. I'd wait until around the engagement party. Or just sure. before the or just before the pregnancy test results. <laughs> That's oh, a by the dick way, move. By the way, I'm dying. <laughs> That's such a dick move. Jimmy Get away from the pregnancy. <laughs> Lights, camera, and action. Welcome to the I Remember Liking That Movie Podcast. Remember those childhood movies you loved? We're going to watch them again and find out if they're still as amazing as you remember. Let's get ready to join Anna and Jimmy as they go back and watch those movies you remember being oh so awesomely good. Horror movies that scared. Comedy movies that dared. And action movies so preposterously ludicrous that they defied the laws of common sense. Now, here's your hosts, Anna Santos and Jimmy Coates. Okay, welcome to the I Remember Like That Movie podcast. Today we are going back to the, well, we've been here, <laughs> the 90s. <laughs> been here a lot this season. We have, we have. Money Train, 90s. Gremlins 2. Yeah. Um, what else have we done this season? I know, there was, I know there was something else. Yeah, no. Wait, Out Cold? Or was that 2000s? That's 2000s, yeah. Van Helsing, that's 2000s too. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so 90s in the It feels 2000s. very 90s. Does that help? Yeah. So we have Joe versus the Volcano, Tom Hanks. And I think this was the first Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan movie that they starred in together. I think it was, yes. Yeah. And obviously there was some chemistry there because they did a couple more, didn't they? Yeah. There You've was, got um, Mail. Sleepless in Seattle. I'm, At I least like those two. Did another one. You've got Mail, Sleepless in Seattle. They might have done another one. I don't know. It is directed by John Patrick Shanley. And if you don't know that name, he wrote Moonstruck. A classic. Which was uh, did very well, which afforded him to do this movie. He wrote it and directed it. You also got Lloyd Bridges in here. Meg Ryan, I believe, plays more than one part. Mm -hmm. And I think you have Steven Spielberg producing or doing something so what do you remember about joe versus the volcano because i have kind of a split memory i remember it being a very fun action comedy so i remember laughing through it and i remember thinking it was a little bit ridiculous um i remember liking it now i don't know if it aged well because I also remember it being just a little bit ridiculous. Like it was, it was a very fun, light, lighthearted movie, you know, like there was nothing deep about it. Yeah. That's yeah. what I remember I, from it. I remember seeing it around this time, probably mm. maybe not right at night, but around that time. And I, I didn't like it. I liked the, near the end when they got to the island that i remember uh, and then i saw it again and i appreciated the beginning a bit better so yeah see um, i think i watched it probably about five or six years after it came out because this was another it was on tv so i was like yeah sure i'll watch it and then i did and i was like oh this is not bad i don't remember yeah. loving it but i remember liking it yeah and I haven't seen it since the 90s. Same. Yeah. Same. So it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a very, very long time since I watched. I, I could not tell you any of the story points. I think there's something about somebody being thrown in a volcano. I yeah. think. And that's all I've got. Yeah. That's it. All right. Well, let's go to the box office. With a budget of $25 million, it opened in 1,802 theaters at number two behind hunt for red october but ahead of house party now that i shocking. remember both of those movies me too uh, yeah i remember loving house party <laughs> house party was awesome i don't care what anybody says 
I just I remember a lot of the hijinks, but I remember even back then the funniest be the the old dude across the, the, mm-hmm. the being mad that they have a house party. He's all pissed because they're keeping him up. That guy was awesome. You but, are that guy now. <laughs> yeah, I am that guy now. <laughs> Joe versus Volcano. Uh, it op- uh, had a weekend of nine point two million, and it closed at thirty nine point four, and it opened on Mar- March 9th, nineteen ninety. So. It did not do what they were hoping, obviously. But yeah. it did do horrible. I wouldn't call it a bomb. No, I, I wouldn't call it a bomb either with those numbers. But we also have to factor in because this is 1990. The amount of video rentals. Oh, yeah. That happened. And also like video purchases. This would have gotten, especially as other Meg Ryan, Tom Hanks movies came out. I'm sure a lot of girls were doing marathons of all the rom-coms. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the tale of the tape. Let's cough first. Mute. (laughs) There we go. It's nice. Nice. Joe vs. Volcano. Released 1990. It is a romantic comedy. It's a rom-com, obviously. Rated PG and comes in at an hour and 42. Interesting. Yeah. Taglines An average Joe An adventurous comedy Not terrible but not good either Yeah not great A story of love, lava And burning desire Okay kind of (laughs) cute That's it Eh. That's all you get (laughs) That's all you need Synopsis Joe Banks, Tom Hanks Is dying apparently This is good news since his life was not much worth living anyway. On the upside, a strange millionaire, Lloyd Bridges, offers Joe a way to die with beating and dignity (laughs) by hurling himself into a volcano. With plenty of spending cash and an ensemble of new luggage, Joe embarks on an absurdist journey to his demise, guided by two very disparate disparate? disparate. sisters. Jeez, I'm having trouble with sisters here. Fuck. And trying to puzzle out the meaning of existence. Yeah, I think I, Meg Ryan plays both sisters. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Because I don't remember a second sister. Only Meg Ryan. It sounds funny. It does. And I mean, I'm sure now that we're older, we'll probably find a lot more jokes funny than we did when we were in our teens. Yeah, and that's what I'm kind of hoping. Like, Me too. And there is our movie poster. For the, those that are listening, up top says Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan, a big full moon with Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks on a floating in the ocean on a piece of luggage, I'm guessing. And yes. in the background is a volcano kind of exploding and smoking. It's not a poster. Yeah. No, it's it's fine. Yeah. They've got all the elements in there. Is luggage ensemble, the volcano, Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks. That's all you need to know. All right. Now we go to Rotten Tomatoes. This is where we Freddy, always Freddy. get blindsided. But with 39 critic reviews, it comes in at 67%. And with 50,000 audience reviews, comes in at 54%. So critics like this a lot more than audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, critics' consensus is Joe versus the volcano erupts with plenty of screwball energy and thoughtful observations about living to the fullest, but its ex- existential ambition may prove too goofy for some audiences. Interesting. Hmm. So we'll start with the positive, and you may go first. Thank you. Joe versus the volcano stands on its own. Fantastical oddities are kept grounded by the inimit- inimitable duo of hanks and ryan the film proudly wears its heart on its sleeve proclaiming that the world is beautiful it's a terrible shame when that is forgotten tina cacadelis beyond the cinema cinerama dome jeez yeah that's read tonight that makes me feel good that you're having trouble with some words (laughs) i was like i say it right in my head but when i'm trying to speak it out loud i'm like i can't do that i come on nine times out of ten it's me (laughs) playwright john patrick shanley made his movie directing debut with this defiantly strange totally underappreciated yet completely wonderful romantic comedy jeffrey m anderson combustible celluloid original score four out of four 
damn, Jeffrey, you really like this movie. Joe versus the volcano achieves a kind of magnificent goofiness. Hanks and Ryan are the right actors to inhabit it because you can never catch them going for a gag that isn't there. They inhabit the logic of this bizarre world and play by its rules. Roger Ebert, Chicago Sun-Times, original score, 3.5 out of 4. Wow. Pretty That's high for really Roger good. Ebert. I'll, I'll go first and then... Okay. This is now this is Rotten Tomatoes. This is the audience. Uh, not for everyone, but a great funny movie if you have the right sense of humor. The first in a trio of movies starring Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. Greatly underappreciated. Thomas B. Four stars. Undeniably original, unforgettably charismatic, unassumingly funny, unrelentingly ambitious, unbelievably cinematic, unexpectedly romantic, unfortunately dismissed. Brad F. Five stars. That's a lot of uns, Brad. Yeah. Perhaps one of the most misunderstood films ever made, but either you appreciate its very earnest weirdness or you don't. Personally, I fail to understand how vitriol Mm -hmm. (laughs) could be extended to something so unique and lovably goofy as this. Alec B, 4.5 stars. Wow, Alec. All right, let's go to Rotten. You may start again. After it's over, one thing is perfectly clear. Joe versus the volcano for all its wacky gags, delightfully bizarre look, and ill-fated attempts at insight is only one thing. Mediocre. Juan Carlos Cotto, Miami Herald, original score, two out of four. Thanks, Juan. Somehow, I can't hate this. Then again, I can't really like it either. Alexander, juicy cerebellum, original score, two out of five. Fantastic. A silly fable about love as the end product of seizing the moment and getting out of your comfort zone. It's a scenario as superficial as Shanley's Moonstruck was substantial. Nicholas Bell, IonCinema.com, original score 2.5 out of 5. Ouch. That's that's harsh a little. Yeah. Mm. It's going right for the director. Yeah. Now this is again Rotten Tomato audience. This comedy was all right. Tom Hanks, Meg Rowan, like Lloyd Bridges, Meg Ryan, and the rest of the cast did a decent job in this movie. The plot of the movie was strange and tedious. It wasn't as great as I thought it would be. This was probably one of Tom Hanks' worst movies ever. If you haven't seen it yet, don't waste your time. You won't like it at all. <laughs> it's kind of all over. It's like it's like the ending of my review of a movie. <laughs> this movie sucked, but it's okay. You might want to watch. Ah, fuck it. Stream it. Two stars. <laughs> That's why that sounded so familiar. Uh, (laughs) Strange movie that went from vaguely interesting to a badly done Mel Brooks farce. One to miss. Funk Eye, two stars. See, they're all shitting at the end of the movie. And I'm just, I just said that. That's the part I remember liking. (laughs) Mind you, you would have been like, what, 10, 11? Yeah. About that time that you watched it. So, yeah, with my underwear on the outside of my pants (laughs) and a purple Crayola shoved up the right side of my nostril. This movie's funny. (laughs) Saw this in the theater and loved it. Watched it again yesterday, and apparently my 40-year-old self has different taste than my 11-year-old self. Danielle R., two stars. Thanks, Danielle. Thanks for the warning. IMDb. And it has 40,000 user ratings, which is kind of high for like an older movie like this. It is. And it has a 5.9 out of 10. That's not bad. No. And you may go first with. How could anyone not like this movie? It is classic. 10 out of 10, Terry Lynn Martin. Quirky is not a dirty word. 9 out of 10, Moon Spinner 55. (laughs) It is if you use it right. (laughs) Um, Quirky comedy, great for those who get it. 8 out of 10, SS 724. This movie is delightful. 7 out of 10, fop, fop, fop. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, that username. <clears throat> a fable that grows on you. Watch it again. Six out of ten. T Babe 29. On a scale of one to Casablanca, this film is a Superman returns from 2006. <laughs> Happy go lucky duck. Oh, yeah, that's funny. I was kind of rooting for the volcano. Movie man Kev. <laughs> These are both five out of ten. Both five out of tens. An average Joe versus the screenplay. Four out of ten. Simon QBB. <laughs> yes, Simon QBB. Horrible. Three out of ten. Izzy Pito. 
stupidest, weirdest movie. Two out of ten. I'm not even going to. F and T. Yeah. 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 Without doubt, the stupidest movie ever made. One out of ten. Cell tape 330-797-168. I think that might be that guy's phone number. (laughs) All right. Let's remove you. All right. So we checked out the box office. We did the tail of the tape and we looked at the reviews. So now we will check out the trailer and then we'll make our predictions. Sounds good. Oops. God damn it. Trying to do something new here again. Bites me in the ass. Can you hear anything? Yeah. On a dime. In the middle of a deep, dark factory. An average Joe. Joe Banks. Lived a very boring life. Good morning, Dee. Hi, Joe. What's with the shoe? I'm losing my soul. Yeah. Until one day, he found out yeah, his been there. life was over. I'm not sick except for this terminal disease. That's right. You have some time left, Mr. Banks. Live it well. And that's... Joe Banks? When his adventure began. You and I might be able to help each other. I want to hire you to jump into a volcano. Total red carpet situation. It's wine, women, and song in the sweetest little paradise you ever saw. A real journey. Are you Joe Banks? Yeah. Warner Brothers presents Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan, Joe, Joe, Joe Banks. In the story of a man, a mountain, and a miracle. He's diving! He's jumping! He's lazing! Written and directed by John Patrick Shanley, the Academy Award-winning writer of Moonstruck. I love you. I love you, too. I've never been in love with anybody before, either. It's great. I am glad. But the timing stinks. I gotta go. Joe versus the Volcano. All right. There is our trailer for Joe versus Volcano. So, what is your prediction? I think this might be a painful watch. <laughs> now, I, why do you I say want that? to like it? I want to like it. It does seem to have some quirky comedy bits in there, and and it looks a little weird. And I enjoy weird, but that was not the greatest trailer. No, it doesn't inspire hope in me. So I'm like, ah, did. Is that one of those trailers where they show you like the best bits or is it the one where they don't show you any of the best bits? So you'll be surprised when you see it. Well, it is a long time ago. It's like that actually could be very possible. It's not like, I don't know when they started to do that, where they showed you all the good stuff in the. Yeah. In well, the I think it's when, you know, they're like, so there are approximately 10 scenes that are really good in this movie. Yeah. Put them uh, on. So let's show them all of those and trick them into buying a ticket. But we'll see. I mean, I have hope a little bit because I remember liking it when I was younger. But then I also have to think to myself, there's a reason why I haven't seen it in almost 30 years. So I, eh, I'm i torn. I don't, from the trailer, I don't think I'm going to like this. Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping uh, going through it, I was going to have a better appreciation from when I was younger. Yeah. That I could relate to it a bit more. It doesn't... <sighs> I, yeah, because I'm kind of the same. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't look, doesn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Doesn't doesn't look good. I don't no. know, that's all I can say. No. All right. Well, we are going to go watch Joe versus Volcano, starring Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. And when we come back, ba- book. When we come back, <laughs> we'll let you know. <laughs> Words are oh. hard. <laughs> yeah. You heard them. Movie time. Let's all go to the lobby and get ourselves a treat. 
and then watch a classic kick-ass movie from whenever the one we're about to watch was made. Yay! Hello! Welcome back, everyone. I hope everyone was able to catch Joe versus the Volcano. <laughs> did you watch Joe versus the Volcano? Yes, I did. Me too. I actually bought Joe versus the Volcano. Did you buy it too? So did I, because it was just as expensive as renting it. So I was like, I might as well buy it. Might as well. Same the price. Office. Yeah. So your initial thoughts. There's a reason why I haven't watched this in 30 years. <laughs> and oh boy, did that did this movie show me why I haven't watched it in 30 years? <laughs> actually, this this is great because I actually kind of liked it. I I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> My initial thoughts after going through everything that we did before, I, I went in thinking it's a fairy tale. Mm. It would have a silliness to it, and I was hoping that I'd be able to appreciate it even more than my 20-year-old self or my even younger self for the when he first watched it. Because as a kid watching it, I thought it was okay and funny when they got to the island. As 20, I appreciate it a little more. Being a little older and watching it, having a better idea of what I was in for, I did appreciate it a lot more. It is not my favorite movie. It's not my favorite Tom Hanks movie by any means. But I I did end up liking it. That's good. I don't I didn't mind it. Does that like it wasn't Well, I like it better when you hate it or I hate it and you like it. And... I know. But here's what I here's what I mean by I don't mind it. Like it wasn't torturous to watch. I did not right. roll my eyes. I did not lose my mind, but I also did not laugh. Like there were a couple parts where I like kind of half smiled and, and giggled a little bit. But I mean, other than that, it was like, I mean, this is so hard. It has the quirky. It has the weird. Yeah. Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks have incredible chemistry. Yeah. I see what they were trying to achieve. Cause like some of the characters were fantastic. Dan Hedaya, who plays Mr. Watori. Yeah, he was awesome. <laughs> he's classic in everything. I don't care what he's doing. Like, he's awesome no matter what. So, like, I see what they were doing, but I'm like, it just didn't have the magic. It didn't have. And I mean, it's not like I super hated this movie, but I didn't like it. That's just, it was. Eh. That's it. All right. Well, let's let's go through this movie. And uh, I'm reading it, so I can't see you while I'm reading it. It's Okay. I, I think I like this movie a lot uh, more than you did. So if I'm saying something and you want to rebuttal and I don't yeah. see the rebuttal in your face, <laughs> <laughs> by all means, um, <laughs> or <clears throat> excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> all right. Joe Banks is a downtrodden everyman from Staten Island, working a clerical job in a dreary factory for an unpleasant for demanding boss Frank Rattori. Joyless, listless, and chronically sick, Banks regularly visits doctors who can find nothing wrong with him. Okay, being much older and having dabbled in some office jobs, I did appreciate this, this scene a lot more. Yes. This opening, the getting out of the car, that drudge to go into the building. And it, you're right, there is a lot, it is very quirky, it's very odd, and very fairy tale type that mm. even like the the turnstile yeah like getting into it then the walkway is all this weird yeah there was some there was a really greatly staged opening scene mm -hmm. and i'm like i see where you're getting where you're going with this i see it i understand it i appreciate it but it like i know this is terrible it's almost like tom hanks couldn't be cranky enough do you know like or resigned enough yeah it just wasn't hitting it for me, but I was like, everybody else looks absolutely miserable. So I believe you. Yeah. And everything was over exaggerated, but anyone who works in an office or has worked in an office, a cubicle, a call center, mm. there are days when you felt like these people dragging their asses into work, like the agony of oh, yeah. dragging yourself to a job that was going to be the same thing over and over. And you look up in the heavens like, why God, why? <laughs> 
But I do that with my kids too. So <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, yeah, I know there's people out there who love their job and they're just so upbeat all the time. I just want to say everyone hates you. I aspire to be that person. Really? Like in my in my mind, I'm like, I wonder what it's like to want like to want to be at work. Like yeah. to be happy to go there. I I would love to have that feeling, but oh, yeah. I realized maybe 20 years ago that I was meant to be retired. Like yeah. I was not meant By to work. 30. <laughs> no, not even I was I was I was supposed to be independently wealthy. That's mm. I was supposed to have a trust fund. Like that's what I should have been born into. Not a working class family because yeah, this is bullshit. Working <laughs> class bullshit. families suck. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, but you're right, Dan Hadea. I think it's Hadea. Hadea and that fucking phone conversation. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We have I'm not all saying overheard. That. I'm not saying that. I'm not arguing. <laughs> I, I like the, I'm not saying he can't get the job. I'm saying, can he do the job? Yeah. I'm not saying, no, but I'm not saying he can't get the job. But it was and just was like, mm. over and over. And it, it got to the point where like it was, they did it so much on purpose, obviously, yeah. that it was ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I will say, seeing this, Meg Ryan is is very talented. Oh, yeah, she is. And She's very talented. But being the first Meg Ryan m movie I've seen in a while, I forgot how naturally likable and talented she was or is. Yeah, she has and incredible. She has Especially incredible... she has a redhead and a blonde. <laughs> and a brunette. Eh. Eh? That's all right. No, not your thing. <laughs> no, she always had really great screen presence. Yeah, she, yeah. Like, the camera loves her and her and Tom Hanks have such incredible chemistry. Like even when they're not saying anything to each other, you can feel it. Yeah. Like, there was a reason. Other, yeah. Yeah. Some producers or cast agents were like, yeah, we need to get these guys in a movie again. They're fantastic together. Yeah. Finally, Dr. Ellison diagnoses an incurable disease called a brain cloud, which has no symptoms, but will kill him within five or six months. Ellison says that the symptoms he has been experiencing are actually psychosomatic, caused by trauma in his previous job as a firefighter. Ellison advises him to live a few remaining months of his life well. The doctor played by Mr. Unsolved Mysteries himself. What a voice. He's amazing. I wish I had that voice. I would have got laid a lot more. <laughs> Just down to the voice. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't have got laid any less. <laughs> um. But I'm bummed. Yeah, Joe tells his boss off, quits his job, and asks former co-worker Dee Dee, the first Meg Ryan character, out on a date. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hope like uh, anyone get who gets a terminal diagnosis would quit their job in at least this manner or something adjacent or more. Uh, I mean, if you hate your job, I've had jobs I I liked, but I I've had ones that sucked. I've had jobs where if it was me, I'd be dancing around with a gasoline container, painting the walls <laughs> with gas and flicking a match as I skip down the walkway. I'm trying to think of every time I've ever quit a job. And it's not necessarily that I was happy to quit, but it was just kind of like, okay, well, I'm leaving now. Bye. Hmm. You're just not serving my purpose anymore. Although I do remember the last time I quit a job which was when I worked at David's Tea. I got it as like a second job for some reason. I don't know why. I think I wanted the discount on tea and mugs. Uh, I ended up quitting because they hired a new guy. And when they promoted him to like key holder, which was the same position I held. Yeah. They, they were paying him more. And I had been there for like three years longer than him. So I got pissed and I was like, look, talk to HR, get me a pay raise now. They couldn't do it. So I was like, cool, cool. Boxing Day is my last I'm day. I because it happened literally right before Christmas. They were like, "We'll up you in the new year." I'm like, "No, <laughs> fuck you! I don't even need this job. I'm here for the discount. I'm leaving." Then, like three years later, the pandemic hit and all the stores closed, so it's fine. Yeah, their date is a success, but when Joe tells Dee Dee that he is dying, she tells him she cannot deal with the revelation and leaves. He should have had waited until after they banged 
I'd wait until around the engagement party. Or just sure. before the or just before the pregnancy test results. <laughs> That's oh, a by the way, move. By the way, I'm dying. <laughs> That's such a dick move. Jimmy Get away from the pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Uh, the next day, a wealthy industrialist named Samuel Grainamore makes Joe an unexpected proposition. And this was played by Lloyd Bridges in the only scene he was in. But this yes. was one of those incidents like, okay, remember Harry Dean Stanton and Red Dawn? Mm-hmm. Not as powerful. I'm not saying that. It, um, but that one scene where you remember that character being able yeah. to deliver a scene. And Lloyd Bridges was great as this character. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Grainamore needs Bubaru, a mineral essential for manufacturing superconductors. There are deposits of it on a tiny Pacific island of Wa- Waponi Wu. But the re- re- <sighs> Jesus fuck. The resident Waponis will only let him mine it if he solves a problem for them. They believe that the fire god of the volcano on their island must be appeased by voluntary human sacrifice once every century. Mm-hmm. But but none of them are willing to volunteer this time around. Greatamore offers to pay for whatever Joe wants to enjoy his final days as long as he jumps into the volcano within 20 days with nothing to lose. Joe accepts. Uh, this whole scene is silly with yeah. made up words and goofy native lore and all this stuff. But again, this is where it helps knowing that this is a fairy tale movie. It, it's supposed to be ridiculous and silly. Like it, it is silly for a reason. And we're at like the 35 minute mark. Yeah. Like we were at 20 minutes in before he quit his job. So up until this part are, what's your thoughts on it before Joe takes the deal? Are you like bored? Are you? I'm not bored, but I'm not wowed either. Like I was watching it and I was like serviceable. It's fine. It works. Lloyd Bridges shows up. I'm like, you're a little wackadoodle. God bless watch the scene and i was like this all sounds ridiculous robert stack is the as the doctor fantastic so i was like okay because i always look at the first like 30 minutes of a movie especially if it's an hour and a half long i'm like this is your time to set up the story and they did that they set up the story they showed just how miserable he was at his job just how miserable his actual job was like you felt it in your soul how shitty that job was like you could feel it And then they showed him, you know, having this revelation and getting the offer that sets him on the track for the rest of the movie. So I was like the first, it it was very well paced. And I was like, okay, we're moving. We're great. Like I wasn't wowed by the movie, but I was like, there's still time. There's still time for it to get better. Joe spends a day and night out of the town in New York where he solicits advice on everything from style to living life to the fullest from his chauffeur, Marshall. I like this part. I thought Marshall was cool. Marshall uh, was was it, cool. Yeah. Was it me or was Marshall driving the limo on the park walkway? Um, It's very possible. Because, yeah, because it was only like it looked like a, an actual walking. Yeah. Lane, not an actual road. Um, yeah, for those who don't remember, Joe doesn't know where to go shopping. So Marshall, the limo driver stops the car and hops in the back to get a read on a situation where he's going to help him pick out a place to shop. He gets his hair done, suits, tuxedos, African safari or Australian safari gear. I don't Mm -hmm. think whatever. I didn't get that part, but, uh, he also purchases four top of the line waterproof steamer trunks from a fanatically dedicated luggage salesman. (laughs) And uh, I got to say, that man did his job. Yes. Yeah. That's some very high-end luggage. And he was very excited about it. When he oh, heard yeah. where Joe was going, he was like, I got it. That's the perfect thing for you. And it was impressive. Yeah. Joe then flies to Los Angeles, where he is met by one of Granamore's daughters, Angelica, mm-hmm. a flighty socialite. This is hot redhead Meg Ryan. Yes. And just looking ahead here. Yeah. Wikipedia jumps to angelica angelica dropping him off uh and i did make a note joe's interaction with angelica is only around 10 minutes long it seemed a little longer i I think his interaction with marcia was longer but his interaction with angelica felt longer but not not looking at my watch longer and i don't know if i'm reading the film right but like a fairy tale each little interaction with joe feels like a chapter in a book or more like a mini adventure like each having yeah. a very 
definitive ending to Joe's adventure with his job, Mr. Granamore offering him the thing, mm-hmm. Marshall taking him out, Angelica. And the, it seemed like they're just little tiny adventures, Joe adventures, with a beginning, a middle, and an end to each one, where there's Angelica becomes a little better of a person. Mr. Marshall didn't want anything to do with them at the beginning, but wanted it to hang out with them later on, but he wasn't going to be uh, coming back. So, it, yeah, that's kind of felt that way to me. Okay, so back to hot redhead Meg Ryan. She picks him up, takes him to lunch, <laughs> tells him she's a poet and an artist, as uh-huh. most kids living off their rich parents are. Um, <laughs> or that could be a stereotype. I, I don't have rich parents. I don't know. Neither do I. And I was always <laughs> told when I told my mom I wanted to be an actress, she looked me dead in the eyes and said, that's for rich people. <laughs> We're not rich. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks. Shows up one of his paintings and they go to the lookout where the painting was done. Tells Joe one of her poems. That was kind of funny. And I didn't, again, I didn't forget how talented Meg Ryan. I just haven't seen a movie within her in it, like for quite mm-hmm. some time, old or new. But yeah, then all of a sudden I'm like armed and dangerous with Eugene Levy and John Candy. DOA with Dennis Quaid, Inner Space with Martin Short, and all these movies started like, yeah, she's made some really cool movies. She's been working very steadily for most of her life. Yeah, yeah, and it's not she's not like the female sidekick or there just because there's a female in the yeah in the script. She's more than helping carry the movie the movie that she's in. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, when he starts talking about her feelings, she shuts down as soon as the, the, it gets serious. She takes him back to the hotel and offers to go upstairs with joe joe being the bigger man than me is like no (laughs) i'd be like hell yeah you freaky wackadoo (laughs) i heard about you crazy chicks in bed jesus (sighs) so wrong dude the next morning angelica takes joe to her father's yacht the tweedledee the captain is her half-sister patricia patricia has reluctantly agreed to take joe to wapani woo Granamore has promised to give her the yacht in return. Okay, and mm-hmm. Joe obviously touched Angelica, not in a creepy uncle who wants to wrestle every time he visits type way, but she kind of like feels better about herself, and you could tell that they they kind of bonded. And yes, um, they had a little bonding moment. They they started out very yeah um, antagonistic, and then had a moment. So are, is are, is the movie losing you now? Because now we've done Marshall and we've done Angelica. The movie lost me a while ago. Oh, did it? Okay. Actually, let me rephrase. The movie never got me. Never even. Yeah. Okay. I was waiting to get gotten and I didn't. I did not care about Joe. I did not care about the many incarnations of Meg Ryan. I, I the highlight for me was Lloyd Bridges as the crazy because he had crazy eyes. Oh, yeah. The, the crazy ass millionaire and i was like yes sir you're carrying crazy i feel you he's um, great in those airplane movies God, he's so good the driver was awesome yep i liked him because there's a lot of no i'm not gonna have dinner with you i gotta go home to wife and kids <laughs> like what are you crazy i, yeah, I like that moment. weirdo but for the most part i was like there was nothing that really sucked me in there was nothing that made me go oh my god this is a pile of flaming shit but there was nothing that made me go, oh, I'm interested in this. So that's where we're at. <laughs> All right. After an awkward beginning, Joe and Patricia begin to bond. Then they run into a typhoon. Okay, they missed a bit here. Uh, this is the longest segment or interaction. They have their bonding moment when he is in bed and she asks if he slept with her sister. He says no. Um trying to remember what they actually did here well she said Um, something about like oh that tells me a lot about you yeah didn't sleep with her because she mentions that she's a lot like her sister in that oh god i can't remember what she said yeah and you're right about the chemistry thing because it when they're acting together whether the movie is great good bad whatever you can't deny like and it's their chemistry and it's really organic um, so it's so natural yeah it oozes out of them like they don't actually have to be saying anything or really interacting like just looking at each other you're like i feel this yeah then they have the dinner with just them sitting and talking 
the fishing I thought was pretty funny. And if you can't mm-hmm. remember, Patricia is catching everything. She just drops her line into the water and a new fish comes up. Joe yep. is awfully getting miffed at this. But he finally gets one. It's that oh, it's a whole gag. And when he pulls up the hammerhead shark and mm-hmm. he just starts screaming. The drinks under the stars when they're just sitting on the boat with the lantern lights. I- I'll be honest. This had me going. I need to buy a boat. I'm- it looked delightful. I'm totally cool with boats. Yeah. Then the typhoon came and I'm like, maybe I don't need a boat. (laughs) (laughs) Amanda Plummer is in this. She works on the boat. She didn't have a huge role or. No, but I did like her character. Yeah. And she could have done a lot more and on maybe unfortunately it ended up on the cutting room floor. Mm. Yeah. Patricia is knocked unconscious and flung overboard after Joe jumps in to rescue her lightning strikes, sinking the yacht. Joe is able to construct a raft by lashing together his uh, streamer trunks. Patricia does not regain consciousness for several days. Joe doles out small supply of fresh water to her while he gradually becomes delirious from thirst. Then he experiences a revelation during his delirium and thanks God for his life. And I would argue this is just an adventure onto itself. Just him alone in the middle of the ocean. Mm -hmm. When Patricia finally awakens, she is deeply touched by Joe's self-sacrifice they then find that they have luckily drifted to their destination. And for a movie at first watch that I only liked when they got to the island, we're an hour and 20 minutes in. Like, there's only mm-hmm. 20 minutes on this island. Mm-hmm. The Waponi treat them to a grand feast. Their leader, Chief Toby, asks one last time if anyone else will volunteer, but there are no takers, and Joe heads to the volcano. Patricia tries to stop him, declaring her love for him. He admits he loves her as well, but the timing stinks. Patricia persuades Joe to have the chief marry them. Okay, so I'll go back just a bit. I get why a lot of reviewers and people like the movie up until this point. Mm. I still like this part. I like Joe practically being tortured while being bathed. I mean, that part I'm fine with. And Patricia is like being delicately washed and fed and sense given to her and the island dudes are sucking on Joe's feet and he's yelling at them to stop and putting octopuses on his face <laughs> and laughing at him. <laughs> Smushing fruit and licking it. Uh, I like how the backstory is a Roman ship full of all these different races landing on the island, given the different... I like that. The, they're, because there's black people, white people, Asian people. They had everybody on that island and I was like, yeah. this is beautiful. I love Nathan Lane. Nathan Lane is awesome. And I even loved Abe Vigoda as the chief. Mm. (laughs) It was so stupid. Um, Yeah, but I thought the silliness of it played into the whole story. The orange soda cans. For those listening or watching, the lore was an ancient Roman ship got lost with all these different people from different religions, blah, blah, blah. But they have an extreme love for orange soda. So much that they won't sacrifice themselves because they love the soda so much they don't want to die. And they don't throw away the cans. They use them for everything. Like mm-hmm. Necklaces, hair, hair fashion. Yeah. Like, hair accessories. <laughs> Those cans are everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. Afterwards, Patricia refuses to be separated from her new husband. When mm. Joe is unable to dissuade her, they jump in together. But the volcano erupts at that moment, blowing them out into the ocean. The island sinks, but Joe and Patricia land near Joe's trusty stream of trunks. At first ecstatic about their miracle salvation, Joe tells Patricia about his fatal brain cloud. She recognizes the name of Joe's doctor as that of her father's crony and realizes that Joe has been set up. He is not dying and they can live happily ever after. And that is our movie. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yes, it is. That is, is our movie. What is your score? Um, stream it only if it's for free. Stream it for free. If it's there and you want to watch it, because it is kind of, I don't want to say historical, but it is kind of historical. It was Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks' first movie together. They went on to do two more romantic comedies that are pretty much standards. They have incredible chemistry. There are a lot of really great actors in this. I didn't get it. Like, it just, it didn't hit for me. I wouldn't say it was bad, but for me, it wasn't good. 
I did not like it. And I mean, am I ever going to watch it again? Nope. However, I mean, if this is something that, if you like quirky, you like weird, and you like something that feels kind of random, but still is part of a continuous story, this might be the movie for you. So yeah, stream it only if it's for free, but I now own it for $4.99. Yes. Thank you, fine. <laughs> All right, my score. Uh, I will be honest. I did not have high hopes for this movie. Uh, my memory of this movie was foggy at best. I only really liked the island part when I was a kid. A few years, a few years later, caught it on TV and thought it was a bit better as a whole. Now, knowing that this is a fairy tale, much like The Princess Bride, please don't go watch this thinking it's Princess Bride. You will be sorely disappointed. <laughs> but like that movie, in the way that it's ridiculous on purpose, it's over dramatic on purpose, it looks ridiculous on purpose. Having worked so many jobs I hated, I appreciate it a little more. It's not my favorite movie by any stretch. When I went to go rent it like you, it was the exact same price uh, to buy, so I bought it. I'm glad I did. I liked it. I didn't love it, but I enjoyed it enough that I would, I wouldn't have been upset just renting it. And mm. I probably will watch it again. Tomorrow, no. Next week, no. Next month, no. This year, probably not. But down the road, I probably will watch it again. At some um, point in the future, yeah. you will watch it again. This is a movie about Joe, and Joe has these little stories with all these different characters. Those characters don't move on to the next story with him. Joe goes off on a new little adventure by himself until we get to Patricia. And the movie has all these well-placed Easter eggs for the audience, like the books Joe wanted to read. They were all about the Odyssey and Robinson Crusoe. They were about this movie. His lamp, if you looked at it, told the whole story of the movie. It had the volcano. It had the yacht. There have been movies that I remember liking and we're sure they were like we're I, I was sure they were forgotten gems like Steel Dawn. I was wrong. <laughs> this movie I remember kind of liking, but was sure this was going to suck balls. I was wrong. The story moves at a decent pace. The characters are all interesting and fun. The movie looks fantastic. Always, even when it's painted scenery or they're on a boat and it's a fake island, a volcano, it just fits in with the whole fairy tale look and vibe. The actors from Dan Hedaya, Lloyd Bridges, Nathan Lane, Robert Stack, Dave Lico, I mean, if you want nostalgia, uh, there are not a whole lot of female actors here because Meg Ryan hogged them all. My my only gripe is Amanda Plummer, I think, was underused. 100%. And, yeah. But Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan were great. I, I say it's worth a rental. And I do the, I in my head, I do like out of five. So that would be about a three out of five. I, I, I would, if I rented it for five bucks, I would not have been mad. If I paid 20 bucks to buy it, uh, I might have been a little. Eh. Yeah. Well, I was like, do I rent it for $4.99 or do I buy it for $4.99? Like, I might well, well just on it. the off chance. Just that... on the off chance that I actually like it and yeah. I want to watch it again. I remember being more into it when I would watched it before. This time when I watched it, I was like, it wasn't sucking me in. It wasn't. And who knows? Maybe I'll revisit this in like a month or two. Rewatch it. See if you know, I was just in a mood when I watched it. Yeah, and that's why. That. But I mean, I was like, it's, it was fine. It wasn't. I, here's the thing. This is a very smart movie. Yep. Very, very smart. There is a lot that is going, like, there are layers to this movie. I just wasn't engaged with it. Yeah. Like, it didn't engage me. And so I was like, mm, am I going to want to watch it again? No, probably not. I'll probably watch it one more time just to confirm whether or not I still feel the same way about this movie. Because I, if I've learned anything from this podcast, it's that how you remember things and also how you feel the day you watch the movie. Oh, yeah. Says a lot. I hate it, Grandma's Boy. <laughs> I hated it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I was not in the mood to watch a comedy. It's such a stupid movie, mm. but it's very funny. And when I watched it again uh, a second time, I'm like, oh, my God, this is great. And then I watched Harold Kumar Christmas, 3D Christmas. Yeah. Loved it. And then a couple of years ago, I was in a I was in a great mood. I put it on to cheer me up, but I didn't find it funny. Yeah, it yeah. Can really your affect. mood, 
your mood does affect what you're yeah. watching. Yeah. But when I watched it, like there was nothing because normally if I'm just, you know, not feeling it or if I'm, you know, and I watch a movie, like I can still get into it and be like, okay, great. But if I'm not in the mood for it, normally I just turn it off. But this movie, it just, it didn't grab me. Yeah. That's all. Like, it, it's it's a very smart movie. It, the work has been put into it. it. Just didn't engage me. And I feel kind of bad about that. Because I'm like, I feel like Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, for their first foray together in the films, I feel like I should have more appreciation. But I do not. So if I rewatch it and find it any better, I'll let you know. And it just might be just one that you just don't like. Maybe it's just one that I'm just like, eh. It's not I did me. get excited. I'm like, oh, right. She hated it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. That's the thing, though. I'm like, I see the work you put in, and I'm sure this works for a lot of other people. It's not working for me. And yeah, this movie is not for everyone. This oh, is God, a no. very, very specific. Yeah, I can see why it didn't make a hundred million dollars. I can see why there mm-hmm. are a lot of people that there are some people that loved it and some people that just they're like eh and yeah. some people that just hated it uh, i get it it's this is not a, a a mainstream everybody's gonna like it type of movie not at all no and that makes me a little sad because i'm also one of those people who was like meh i could take it or leave it yeah I'm not thrilled about it all right so remember to like and subscribe below and if you're listening or watching on youtube tell us below what you thought of the movie follow us on facebook at i remember liking that movie podcast or on x at good bad i don't know actually do i have them and do you have what sure do <laughs> yeah you do good bad yeah. i don't know i don't know I don't know. Uh, you can follow us at either one of those or oh. and message us. Uh, you can tell us how much you like us or hate us. Dick pics, sure. I'll make sure Anna gets them. Maybe I'll keep them for myself. We um, all know that's what's going to happen. <laughs> don't be, be lying. Happens. I'm never going to see a dick pic no matter how many are sent in. No, they're all Jimmy's mine. Jimmy's going to hold on to them. <laughs> <laughs> like a little uh, bouquet of roses. They're just yeah, for him. I'll use them on X. <laughs> um anything else you want anything else about joe versus the volcano no no i was thoroughly underwhelmed by it thoroughly underwhelmed and i was pleasantly surprised so there you go yeah so thank you so much for joining us for joe versus the volcano and until the next movie we remember liking congratulations you just had one of your childhood movie memories vindicated or they just eviscerated it i don't know This is a generic one-size-fits-all type of ending to the podcast. So thank you for listening, and please join Anna and Jimmy next time for another episode of the I Remember Liking That Movie podcast. If you dare to go back and watch that movie you remember liking, 